So they asked me to put together three slides to um, basically describe what we are doing in, in, in the field. Um, so I'm leading this effort. As you can see, this is a, a multi-institutional, multidisciplinary effort. We are a group of uh, geneticists, nutritionists, and microbiologists from uh, four land-grant universities, including the University of Wisconsin-Madison, Iowa State University, the University of Florida, and Michigan State University, USDA, and the Council on Dairy Cattle Breeding, where our goal is to where our goal is to reduce enteric methane emission from dairy cattle by combining selective breeding, the use of uh, milk spectra data and rumen microbiome uh, manipulations. And, and this is an effort that is funded by the Greener Cattle Initiative. The Greener Cattle Initiative is a public-private partnership with uh, 10 founding entities. And we also receive matching funds from the Council of Dairy Cattle Breeding. The Council on Dairy Cattle Breeding is the entity responsible in this country to run genetic evaluations in dairy cattle. So reducing methane emission from dairy cattle has multiple advantages. Not only reducing the environmental impact of dairy farming, but also improving production efficiency. Because you can think of methane as an energy sink, a loss of energy between 6 12% of gross energy that otherwise could be used for growth or uh, for production. So our plan is to phenotype roughly 4,000 lactating Holstein cows over three years. Our initial plan was to phenotype cows on research farms. We have expanded our initial plan, and we are also phenotyping on commercial farms. So we are measuring methane emissions daily using green feed. We have milk production daily, and we have feed intake data daily. We measure milk composition roughly four times a week. And then we have uh, body weight once or twice a week. And we also have spectra data. We run our trials during six, seven, eight weeks in mid lactation. So as I mentioned before, we have this goal of addressing the mitigation of methane emission from dairy cattle using three complementary approaches. One is selective breeding. Basically, develop a national genetic evaluation for methane emission traits. We are basically exactly the same team that developed in December 2020 a national genetic evaluation for dairy cow feed efficiency. And you know the natural next step is to work on methane emissions. The second one is to work with milk spectra data and develop a predictive equation that could be used mostly for management in the farms. And the third one is to work at the level of the microbiome. First of all, we want to better understand the rumen microbiome, understand the composition of and the activity of cows with extreme methane emissions. And we will also planning to do some cool trials where we are exchange the ruminal content between cows in order to decipher the relative influence of the host or the rumen on methane emissions. And we are also working with uh, um, the oral microbiome and the fecal microbiome as proxy traits to develop non-invasive uh, tools that we can use in farms to identify cows with um, or predict methane emissions in, in cows. So these are our uh, outcomes. Um, we started this project uh, basically six months ago, and we are phenotyping at a very good pace. We have almost 1,000 cows already with records. So we plan to 
uh, implement a national genetic evaluation for methane emission traits. The dairy cow today, she produces more than twice as much milk as a cow 60 years ago. And 60% of that change is due to genetic selection. In fact, genetic selection is a very powerful tool to achieve lasting gains in dairy cattle performance. And contrary to changes that can be achieved through changes in nutrition, management, or cow comfort, the changes that we can achieve through genetic selection are cumulative, permanent, and incremental, what makes genetic selection a very powerful tool to mitigate methane emissions from dairy cattle. The second one is we want to develop a prediction equation based on the spectra. So when farmers test their milk, they will get back not only composition, but also a good prediction of the amount of methane that their cows are uh, producing in the farm. We do not have predictive tools right now that we can use in management, and we are planning to develop this tool based on the spectra of the data. And of course, if you are geneticist, you will see that if we can use the spectra data, we can use the spectra as a proxy trait related what uh, Troy mentioned to actually get better predictions of breeding values in the population. And the third one is to better understand the rumen microbiome. So what we are doing is we are tubing, we are sampling rumen from cows in every cohort that we run in the two extremes, 10% up, 10% down in terms of emissions. So we will better understand the rumen composition and activity of those cows, but we are also working with the oral microbiome and the fecal microbiome in order to develop proxy traits, non-invasive, that we can use on farms to predict methane emissions. With that, I want to thank again the organizing committee, the Greener Cattle Initiative, and the Council on Dairy Cattle Breeding for funding this project, and of course, I'm, uh, uh, I will be in the panel later. Thank you.